This video is about language operations. And the reason why we discuss language operations is that languages can be uh, infinite. And in many examples, in fact, you will have to deal with um, infinite languages. And uh, you can define infinite languages in several different ways, but one of them uh, is via operations. So uh, basing your constructions on some previously defined languages, you can have uh, much more examples and often uh, infinite examples. And so um, in, this, um, uh, in this video, we will have uh, uh, an alphabet sigma. And uh, we will have uh, two languages, L and K uh, over sigma. So in other words, L and K, a subset of sigma star. And I define now a number of operations on uh, L and Q. So um, the first one I define is the union. And uh, it's defined exactly as you might expect, thinking that L and K are sets of words in our case. So uh, the union is L union K is exactly the set of words W uh, over sigma star with the property that W is either in L or in Q. I define also the intersection. And this is defined as L intersected K. Um, all the words such that W is in L and W is in K. And then we have the complement of a language. So the complement of L is going to be denoted by L and I put in the exponent uh, C. That's exactly what you might expect it to be if you think about it, uh, that L is a subset of sigma star. So if you think that sigma star is the total set and L is a subset of that, the complement is obviously going to be um, really the sigma star minus uh, L, where this minus is the um, uh, def defined on sets. So uh, in other words, you can also think about this as all the words in sigma star with the property that W is not in L. And um, then we have also the difference, the difference between two languages. And this is exactly defined as the set difference between them. So L minus K is going to be all the words in sigma star with the property that W is in L and W is not in K. We are also going to define the concatenation. Of two languages. So this is going to be L dot K. Uh, sometimes we even skip uh, the dots and we just write L K. And remember that we have defined the concatenation on words. So this is simply going to be defined as the concatenation of uh, all words U V where U is in L and V is in K. Um, and so just to give you an example, uh, what, what this might be. So uh, example. So uh, you might have, uh, for example, if L is the language A, B, N, for all n natural numbers. And um, you take the set, uh, the, the language K to be all the words uh, of type C to power M for M natural numbers. Then LK is simply going to be um, all the words of type A, B to power I, C to power J, with ij natural number. So you take all the possible combinations of words from L and words from K. Now, 
when I take the word, uh, the, the, the language L, and I concatenate it with it itself, um, then we get so uh, the so-called power uh, of uh, L, so the second power. So I'm going to uh, just denote this as uh, L squared. So L squared is going to be just the concatenation of L with itself. And um, in general, I'm going to also define L cubed to be um, the concatenation of L squared uh, with uh, L. So uh, I will write L squared times L. And in general, I define the nth power, uh, I define it inductively, so uh, inductive definition. Uh, so the uh, power uh, of a language L is going to be defined the, um, uh, inductively in the following way. I will say L to power zero is defined to be exactly the language consisting of one single word, and that's the empty word. And the n plus first power is going to be L n times L for all n greater than or equal to zero. <coughs> so if we take uh, again an example, and um, I, I just continue with this uh, L from here. So L cubed, for example, is going to be all the words of type um, a, b to power a, a, b to power j, a, b to power k for all possibilities of i, j, k being natural numbers. So again, I'm taking all possible combinations from L followed by all possible combinations of uh, um, um, uh, words from L and again, all possibilities for words from K. So one thing that you have to avoid is the temptation to think that I has to be equal to J has to be equal to K. Uh, according to our definition, you are allowed to take any word from L followed by any word from L and followed by any word from L. So you have this, uh, uh, that's your, uh, uh, that's your L to power three in this case. And so what, once you have, we have this uh, <clears throat> notion, uh, we also define the iteration. Uh, so iteration of uh, language L. So this is going to be defined as um, L star to be the infinite union of all the powers of L. So union for all n greater than or equal to zero uh, of L to power n. Um, and um, when you think about this, this is going to be all the sequences of words of this type for n greater than or equal to zero and ui in L for all i's from one to n. So it's going to be all possible combinations of um, words from L and combinations of any length from zero to uh, an arbitrarily large number. One, uh, one thing I want to draw your attention to uh, right away is that uh, the empty word, so note here, the empty word is always part of L star. And uh, this is simply because uh, epsilon belongs by definition to L to power zero and L to power zero by definition is a part of L star. So <clears throat> with uh, these definitions in place, I, I just want to say that they can be grouped in two different um, classes of languages. And these are, these are going to make more sense once we go to the next uh, video. Uh, so um, what I want to say is that all these operations can be grouped into two categories. One is um, uh, set operations, set operations on languages. And these were the union, the intersection, and the complement. 
And the other class, which we are, we are going to talk about quite a lot in the remaining of this course, is the so-called regular operations. On languages. And in this category, we include one more time the union, so there is no confusion. Union is categorized to be both a set operation but also as a regular operation. And we are including in this, in this category the concatenation and the iteration. So the union, the concatenation, the iteration, they are uh, called regular operations and uh, union intersection complement, they are called uh, set operations. So this, this is something that I, um, I mentioned already on the previous whiteboard and I just mentioned it one more time. Um, it's really important to uh, realize what's the structure of L star. So if you have a language L over sigma star, um, it's really important to realize that uh, L star is exactly made of um, sequences of words uh, over L. So it's really made of things such as W1, W2, Wn. For n um, arbitrarily large, greater than or equal to zero, and all these words being elements of L. So in, in other words, if you, if you want, this is the same thing as thinking about L being um, just a set of uh, objects, such as uh, you, you could think about them as symbols. And then when you form L star, then you just uh, take all these symbols in uh, an arbitrary order and of an arbitrary length and you are going to get objects in L star. And obviously in our case, the symbols, uh, they are themselves uh, sequences of uh, letters from sigma star. So what we get in the end is obviously a language over sigma star. But this is important to realize that the words in L star are of this form. One more uh, note I want to make, you, you can also think about it as an example, but it's really a, a general note. So uh, what happens if L is, uh, you know, the empty set, who is L star yeah, in this case. And uh, you see, based on the pro previous um, uh, note, we, we just thought, uh, you know, it, it's got to be sequences of words from L, but L doesn't have any words. So uh, really, I cannot form any sequences. If, if somebody is asking me, hey, can you form a sequence of length uh, one or, or a sequence of length two or, or a sequence of length, uh, you know, 15, um, I don't have any, any elements to choose uh, from L to form such sequences. So it looks like uh, L star doesn't have uh, any words. Um, but in fact, L star is made by um, L to power zero. And then um, it's union with um, all these um, other powers. Uh, so. Uh, and this part is empty. Uh, because to form any word from here, I would need at least uh, one word from L, and, and L doesn't have any words. But this one was defined to be exactly the um, set consisting of the empty words. So in other words, this is important to realize that L star, even when L is the empty set, L star is not empty, but in fact, it, it's exactly the set consisting of the uh, empty word. One small result that I want to um, just prove for you. Uh, this is a, a lemma. And the lemma says, um, if I have, so if language L is included into language K, then language L star is included into K star. And this is a result that you are going to prove yourselves in your next uh, demo session. Here is an example of how this uh, lemma could be used. Uh, maybe I'm just uh, keeping with my habit of having the examples on the other side. So if I have an example here, so example, um, if I take the sigma to be uh, the binary alphabet 0, 1, 
Um, and I take language L to be um, all the words over sigma star with a property that the number of occurrences of zero is different than the number of occurrences of one in this world. Um, so for example, I mean this, uh, this language would consist of uh, things such as, uh, you know, A and B, but A, B would not be uh, such a word, but I would, uh, I would have to take uh, maybe A, A, B and uh, A, B, A, and uh, maybe I can also take something like B, A, B and a lot of other words, but things such as A, B or A, B, B, A, D, they would not be in the language. So, in this example, um, I just want to show you that L star, in fact, is equal to sigma star. So, even though um, in my language uh, I don't have a number of words, when I'm iterating, I'm going to get all the words uh, uh, over sigma. And um, obviously, this, uh, this inclusion is clear. Uh, because L is included into uh, sigma star. And so uh, obviously uh, this implies that when I iterate um, L, I'm only going to get words over sigma star. So, so that, that part is clear. The one that needs a little bit of attention is, um, is this one. So um, um, you see, I, I realized that I, I just wrote uh, A's and B's, and in fact, my example was with zero and, so, and one. So um, um, I'm just going to write this, uh, this example uh, one more time, uh, just using zero and one. So um, just so that we have it well done. So here I should have written uh, L consists of words such as zero and one, and, and then it consists of words such as zero, zero, one, and zero, one, zero, and maybe one, zero, zero, and, um, you know, one, one, zero, one, and, and, and so on. So uh, words of this type. So <clears throat> when I have this inclusion, the crucial thing to uh, realize is that obviously, as I wrote in my example in here, the zero and one, they are part of L. And so this is the same as saying that sigma is included into L. And this implies by this lemma uh, that we have on the left-hand side that sigma star is right away included into L star, which proves the inclusion I wanted to prove. And then we have another lemma I want to formulate in here. And this is something I already mentioned in passing. And uh, <clears throat> it says for any um, language L over sigma, we have that L star is a set of uh, a set consisting of the empty word in uh, union with L star L. And um, I want to show you how this result can be proved. And, um, I want to first. Um, uh, show this inclusion. So if I take a word from L star, uh, so this by definition, it means that W is formed by words like this. It's going to be some sequence of U1, U2, UN, with N something greater than or equal to zero, and UI from L for all i's from one and one to n. And the point is, if n equals zero, w is epsilon, uh, which belongs indeed to the right-hand side of what I wanted to prove. So it belongs to this one. So in this case, uh, the, uh, uh, the proof is done. But if n is greater than or equal to one, um, and really the observation is that um, 
this word u1 u2 all the way to u n minus one so i stop one before um, so this is a word from l star obviously because it's just a sequence of words from l so then um, so u um, belongs to uh, l star times l because it's made of a word of uh, from l star concatenated with this last word which is from L. So, um, and, and this is included into epsilon union L star L. So, this uh, this part of the proof is done. Now, <clears throat> the other way around, the other inclusion. Um, if I have, so if W is epsilon, then this uh, obviously by definition. Uh, is included into, uh, it belongs to L star, so th that part is clear. Now, if W is rather on the other side uh, of this union, so W is a word from L star L, um, then this is really, what this means is that W is formed by uh, two words, uh, U and V, and U is from L star and V is from L. And um, the fact that u is from L star, uh, this means that u is of the form u1, u2, all the way to un, or some n greater than or equal to zero, and with all these words being from L. So this means that our w is of the form, so u times v, so it's going to be u1, u2, un, uh, followed by word V, and all these words, all the UIs and, and V, they are all from uh, L, and so uh, this clearly belongs to uh, L star. So that concludes our proof.